Hi guys, thanks for joining. Today I will be talking about how we can suspect lupus on the basis of trichoscopy. Let's go! There are three important things to remember when talking about systemic lupus erythematosus and trichoscopy and hair loss. First of them is that hair loss is a very common feature, a very common symptom in systemic lupus erythematosus. Second, that trichoscopy, when we perform trichoscopy in a patient with hair loss, then we can see some features which may be indicative of systemic lupus erythematosus and may indicate the need for further differential diagnosis, but we never can establish the diagnosis of systemic lupus erythematosus on the basis of trichoscopy only. What is interesting in trichoscopy of systemic lupus erythematosus is that hair loss is present in approximately 50% of patients. It may be more or less severe, but the trichoscopy features are the same regardless of the intensity or the presence of hair loss. And these features are associated with the blood vessels. There are two types of vascular abnormalities which are being observed in trichoscopy in systemic lupus erythematosus, and these are the prominent, very often thick, arborizing vessels, and the second abnormality may be even more common, the thick, tortuous blood vessels. The thick, tortuous and arborizing blood vessels are very common in systemic lupus erythematosus, but they're not specific. They may be present also in other disorders, especially in connective tissue disorders, such as systemic sclerosis or dermatomyositis. Just to compare, the blood vessels in the normal healthy person are usually very short and thin. They sometimes may be arborizing, especially in the occipital area, but they remain short and thin. There are sometimes elongated vessels in some diseases. This is not the case in lupus. What we will see in lupus are the very thick, tortuous, sometimes arborizing vessels with a curly appearance. Just as a reminder from my video about hair loss in systemic lupus erythematosus, there are three clinical types. One is the diffuse hair loss in lupus. The second one is the focal hair loss, which looks like alopecia areata. And the third one is the so-called lupus hair, which is brittle with a tendency to break. What is interesting that the trichoscopy features will be very similar in all these three cases, and very often these three types of hair loss in lupus may coexist. The most common, but at the same time the least specific feature of trichoscopy in systemic lupus erythematosus is a decrease in hair density. The second feature is a decrease in hair thickness. However, there were no big studies to confirm that this is really associated with lupus only and that it is not an association with an early phase of androgenic alopecia. A third common feature, especially visible in patients who have the focal type of hair loss in the course of systemic lupus erythematosus, are the yellow dots. But usually, this is not a full field of view of yellow dots, such as we see it in patients with alopecia areata. A next feature, which is typical for trichoscopy in patients with systemic lupus erythematosus, are the so-called lupus hairs. These are hairs which have a curly appearance and they break very easily. And then, what is very commonly seen in patients with systemic lupus erythematosus is the tendency to premature graying. I mentioned that the focal hair loss in patients with lupus can be very similar 
to what we see in alopecia areata. So how can we differentiate these two diseases? Well, clinically, we can rather suspect lupus if the patches show incomplete loss of hair shafts, whereas in alopecia areata, we will very often see patches with complete loss of hairs. In trichoscopy, in patients with lupus, we will see a decrease in hair density and hair thinning. Also outside of the patches, we will see the typical vascular abnormalities and the typical lupus hair may be observed in almost every patient with systemic lupus erythematosus. On the other side, in alopecia areata, we will see the typical trichoscopy features of alopecia areata. In summary, when looking for tips which may allow to suspect systemic lupus erythematosus on the basis of trichoscopy, there are three main trichoscopy features to keep in mind. Two of them are vascular. These are the thick tortuous vessels and the thick arborizing vessels. And the third one are the so-called lupus hair with the typical curly appearance. If we see these three features coexisting in one patient, the probability that the patient has systemic lupus erythematosus is quite high. However, if we see only the vascular abnormalities, then we should keep lupus in mind, but keep searching also for other causes of these abnormalities. And these, as mentioned, include other connective tissue diseases. I am finishing with a question for you about what is this in the trichoscopy image of a patient with systemic lupus erythematosus? If you know or you would like to guess, please consider leaving your answer below the video. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you would like to watch more about trichoscopy and about hair diseases, please consider subscribing to this channel. Thanks a lot. See you next time.